In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, who are glorified in the Bishop St. Martin, both by his life and death, make new, we pray, the wonders of your grace in our hearts, that neither death nor life may separate us from your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Remind your people that it is their duty to be obedient to the officials and representatives of the government, to be ready to do good at every opportunity, not to go slandering other people or picking quarrels, but to be courteous and always polite to all kinds of people. Remember, there was a time when we too were ignorant, disobedient, and misled and enslaved by different passions and luxuries. We lived then in wickedness and ill will, hating each other and hateful ourselves. But when the kindness and love of God our Saviour for mankind were revealed, it was not because he was concerned with any righteous actions we might have done ourselves. It was for no reason except his own compassion that he saved us by means of the cleansing water of rebirth and by renewing us with the Holy Spirit, which he has so generously poured over us through Jesus Christ our Saviour. He did this so that we should be justified by His grace to become heirs looking forward to inheriting eternal life. The Word of the Lord The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Alleluia, alleluia. Through the good news, God called us to share the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia! The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered one of the villages, ten lepers came to meet him. They stood some way off and called to him, Jesus, Master, take pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go 
and show yourselves to the priests. Now, as they were going away, they were cleansed. Finding himself cured, one of them turned back, praising God at the top of his voice and threw himself at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. The man was a Samaritan. This made Jesus say, Were not all ten made clean? The other nine, where are they? It seems that no one has come back to give praise to God except this foreigner. And he said to the man, Stand up and go on your way. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For us, the Christians, God is love. In one of his encyclicals, St. John Paul II wrote that man cannot live without love. But in reality, a lot of us are struggling to love and to be loved. There are many of us who think that we are not lovable. In the first reading, St. Paul says that God loves us not because of the righteous actions we might have done ourselves. It was for no reason except his own compassion. It is in the nature of God to love. In the Gospel reading, we encounter the lepers who were healed through their meeting with Jesus. All were healed physically, but only one received the healing spiritually. The other nine either ignored or did not recognize the spiritual healing that they experienced when they encountered Jesus. How many of us are experiencing that? St. Paul said that God loves us and His love and Spirit is poured upon us in our baptism. The door to eternal life is open for us and we are invited to share in that life with Him. But there are many times I find myself struggling and failing to see because I am too concerned with the things I'm struggling with in my life right here and right now. And in that struggle, I'm just like the nine lepers who fail to see the love of God and give thanks for His grace. God does not need our thanksgiving. But why is it still important to give thanks? In a way, God deserves our gratitude. If we were to accept God's gifts without giving thanks, we would be reduced to mere consumers of grace, incapable of giving anything back. But we are not just given the gifts, we are invited to participate in the life of God, which is naturally to love, to be active in giving and receiving love. When we give thanks, we are no longer passive recipients we become active givers, giving back to the one who has given us what we do not deserve. By giving thanks for what he had received, the leper was capable of receiving more from God. Indeed, he did receive more. He was saved. And saved by God's mercy, he was now capable of receiving still more of growing in intimacy with God. Sisters and brothers, we are invited today to a personal relationship and intimacy with Him. We are not mere recipients of God's love. We are called to love Him back and be God's love for everyone around us. Let us rely on the Lord because he is our healer. He is our love. The Lord is our shepherd, and there is nothing we shall want. As God's beloved children, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Grant to us, who have been restored by this sacrament of unity, O Lord, perfect harmony with your will in all things, that just as St. Martin submitted himself entirely to you, so we too may glory in being truly yours, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.